Hey everyone, in this video I am going to show you how you can sign in with Google on your standalone APK using Expo. So right now I am in Expo Go and I'm just going to sign in with Google to show you what it should look like. So that's the type of experience we want users to go through. However, if you take this current code and you try and make a standalone build out of that, the user will not go through that experience and they will actually get an unauthorized error. So I'll show you guys how you can mitigate that and allow the users to sign in. So let's get started. So to get started, we need to first create some new client IDs for iOS and Android. So I'm going to go to their documentation and here in this section they have iOS native and Android native creating a new Google client ID. So here I'm going to create some new credentials and this will be an OAuth client ID. For this I'm going to select iOS first. For this I'll just say iOS app. The bundle ID is going to come from app.json and here we can specify this so we'll say that our bundle identifier is a value I'm going to make this the same as my scheme here and then I'm going to go back into creating an OAuth client ID and paste that bundle ID here. And then I'm just going to create this. Now I'm going to copy this and add it to my code as the iOS client ID. Now I'll do the same for Android. So create another OAuth client ID. This will be an Android app. I'm going to have the same package name, so let's go there and app.json. Paste that in. For the SHA1 certificate fingerprint, we can go to their documentation and it says to run EAS credentials to get that fingerprint, so that's what I'm going to do. And here I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to create it. Alright, now I'm going to copy this client ID and add it to my code as well. Now at this point, we need to import use effect from React. And we need to get the second returned function from use auth request. I'm going to call this Google response. Now under here, I'm going to call the use effect hook. And it's going to be dependent upon Google response. Within the function, I'm going to go down to the function that I created earlier, this Google Auth function, and I'm just going to copy this code. And then I'm going to get rid of this and call Google Prompt Async Google Auth now. And that's just the name of the prior function. And why I'm doing that is because I'm returning it from this hook. And now here, I'm going to create a new function that's going to be asynchronous and I'm going to call it login user with Google and it's going to take in an access token which will be a string. And I'm just going to paste in that code that I copied earlier. Now here we are not going to need this if statement or the response. 
or this access token. Now outside of this function, we'll say if Google response dot type is equal to success, then we want to get the access token from the Google response. So we'll say const access token is equal to Google response dot params. And then we will call in login user with Google passing in the access token. Now we can test this out on our Expo Go app just to make sure that it runs all right. So let's sign in. And there we see it works over here. Now we can make our build. So here is what my EAS.json file looks like. I'm just gonna build a preview. And to do that, the command is EAS build dash dash profile. And I'm gonna specify preview. So with that build finally done, I'm going to open that up. And here I am going to install that. All right, and just so you can see, this is now an app on my Android phone. So I'll click into it and I will sign in using a Google account. And there we are, we just signed in on a standalone APK build. So that's how you can do it using Expo and a managed build. One other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set select account to true within this object that gets passed into the use auth request method. And I just think that it's a better user experience if you allow the user to select from multiple accounts. And when reading up on solutions to this issue, I came across this and their solution was to specify the redirect URI. So if my solution doesn't work, go ahead and give this a try. But that is it for this video. I hope that this helped and thanks for watching.